Of course it exists. It could exist because it, um, young people, teenagers, but even kids need something to claim. They need something to say, this is mine and it's not yours. And I think that's the importance of teenage literature especially. Mm -hmm. It doesn't matter if an adult likes or dislikes a teenage book. A teenager can say, it's mine, I don't care what you think. And that is vital, so of course there is. The boundary is porous, mm -hmm. you know, it's easy to cross. You can read a teen book if you're not a teen, there's not a problem there, but of course such a thing exists, of course it does. They need the same thing that adults need, which is a vast variety. And I think teenagers right now, right today, are so lucky because young adult literature in particular contains everything. Comedies, dramas, science fiction, all genres you wanted, all levels of seriousness, all levels of literariness, you know, mm -hmm. or exciting, um, which don't have to be at opposite ends. Uh, it, they, need a, a, they need variety and diversity and a million different voices. And that's what they're getting. Okay. And that's why writing for teens is so brilliant. <laughs> oh, the book I recommended for the festival in particular was, um, in German it's Voest mein Hut. Mm -hmm. And so I want my hat back in uh, English, which by John Klassen. And it's a picture book, so it's not for teens, it's for younger, but I think it is one of the great books of the last 20 years. Mm -hmm. I think it's, and, and a picture book can be a great book. Okay. Absolutely can. And, and uh, Voest Mein Hut is perfect. It's so funny and so unexpected and so yeah. beautifully drawn, and it can be appreciated by everybody. So Voest Mein Hut, read that, read it, read it. A good book is a personal experience. I couldn't possibly tell you what a an objective good book is. Mm -hmm. I never a, a book. I always talk when I talk to teenagers. I always tell them that uh, whether you love a book or hate a book, you're right. Yeah. Nobody, need, nobody needs to tell you an outside opinion about that book. They, they, they can't say you should love it or you shouldn't love it. Every, every reaction is correct, and that's important. Again, that's that sense of ownership. It's saying, I feel this way about this book. And uh, so a good book is, would be different for me than it would be different for you. And thank God, thank God that, that, it's that, it's, that it's different for both of us. That's how it should be. I think the, the question of influence is different than what most people think it is. I mean, the idea that children are being uh, instructed, I think, is incorrect. Because mm -hmm. I think children, like everybody else, uh, can tell the difference between a story and reality. And so I don't really worry so much about content of books so much. Mm -hmm. But what I think that they do is that they uh, do what all good books do, which is um, show you empathy, allow you to experience the universe through... Uh, people who are totally unlike you and that is almost a miracle that sounds like a small thing but that is almost a miracle it's you know there are studies that people who don't read fiction are less empathetic than people who do and empathy empathy is what we need to survive empathy is what the human species needs to make it another three thousand years and uh, uh, so I think that's the best thing that a kid's book does is it says hey there's a whole big world outside of you let's go exploring this is what it's like, and this is what these people feel like. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. It's great. Uh, yes, yes, and yes. Yeah, I mean, I suppose less on the ambassador, because, I, again, I don't ever want it to feel like medicine. Mm -hmm. I don't ever want it to feel like, welcome, children. I mean, that's, no. Mm -hmm. But I, I love telling a story, but I think that telling a story is an art. So I think there is an art of storytelling. So I consider myself an artist as well. And if you don't, why bother writing? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Why bother thinking you have something to say? So I always tell, I always tell new writers, call yourself a writer and call yourself an artist, even though it feels just indulgent. You got to do it because you got to believe you have something to say. You got to believe you have a story to tell. Uh, so yeah, all those things. Less on the ambassador. Okay. I I find it great to meet um, a writer of a book that I've loved. Usually they're not disappointing. Sometimes they are, uh, but mostly, mostly it's just fascinating. Um, but for a writer, it's just just to meet people who've read your book and I want to ask you about your book. That kind of connection, because writing is so solitary, so in a way separate, because you are you are the person who sits at the side and re reports on the world. So to step back out into the world, well, you have to to write. You have to engage with the world to write. So just to be able to engage with people, see their response, see the surprising things they think. That's, that's vital, that's really necessary, I think.
you know, no, like that's that's the thing that you find out. I've I've talked to audiences in Taipei, I've talked to audiences in Dublin, in Budapest, in Ljubljana, in New York, in Washington, mm-hmm. and uh, kids are the same. Australian kids are the same as kids from Liverpool. You know, they're the same. They have the, the Taipei kids. You know, same questions. And that's great. That's amazing. I mean, of course, cultures are different, and of course, there are cultural differences. But really, they're mainly people. There's sort of, there's just a nation of book readers. I think a world of book readers, and I think we're all we all live there. And the people, well, the people who live there, speak the same language. So yeah, they're this glorious, gloriously, gloriously the same as the world over, and that's how I'd like it.